Hello and welcome again to the Writer Review. This is Eric Karat Writer, and this week we're going to be taking a look back at the 2013 holiday Christmas comedy titled A Medea Christmas. Now, A Medea Christmas runs for one hour and 40 minutes long. It is written and directed by Tyler Perry. It is also produced by Tyler Perry, as, as well as uh, Ozzy Areo and Matt Moore. The score was done by Christopher Young. The cinematography by Alex Gruzinski. And it was edited by Macy Hoy. And the stars of the movie are Tyler Perry. Uh, let's see, we also have uh, Anne Marie, Anna Maria Horsford. We also have Tika Sumter. We have Larry the Cable Guy. Get her done. Yeah, okay. We also have uh, Kathy Najimy, Eric Lively, Chad Michael Murray, J.R. Lemon, Alicia Witt, Lisa Welchel. You may, if you grew up in the late 70s and well into the 80s, uh, Lisa Welchel was known for playing the character Blair on the TV series The Facts of Life. As well as Anna Maria, Anna Maria Horsford, if you remember her in the late 80s, she also was in a sitcom comedy. Uh, she co-starred with Sherman Hemsley, and uh, it was the TV series called Amen. Let's see, rounding out the cast, we also have Sweet Brown, Noah, Urea, Jonathan Chase, and Vicky Eng. So, after much hesitation due to poor reception by many, yes, I took the time to finally see Amadea Christmas for myself. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. This is April. What am I doing doing a Christmas review in the middle of April? Well, simple. And I don't need to sound snotty, but well, I've been waiting. I've been I've been held back from doing this one for a long time, and now I've decided to I wanted to do it. Besides, it's my channel. I can do what I want. <laughs> no. All kidding aside, I'm I'm just teasing with you guys so, no, I just I felt like doing it and for that and for no real particular reason. Sure over the years Tyler Perry has tried to find his niche from his cameo appearance in the JJ Abrams Star Trek to trying to fill in the shoes of Morgan Freeman playing his iconic character Alex Cross. But then he tried his hands at doing activities off camera, like writing and directing the exclusively preachy Temptation and Confessions of a Marriage Counselor. But still, it's his iconic character of Medea is what truly made him a household name. The Medea alter ego is his bread and butter. In some ways, Tyler Perry is trying to also try to be like other actors who play multiple roles in movies. I mean, you have you have Eddie Murphy. He's been doing that for many, many years. His Nutty Professor, Pluto Nash, amongst many others. Um, of course, you know, Mike Myers that did it during his Austin Powers era. He was playing multiple characters like Austin Powers, Dr. Evil, fat bastard and gold gold member and uh i, I believe also to um martin lawrence has done that too so you know tyler perry is also kind of gone to the craze of playing multiple characters in his movies and one of his main alter egos is the the um, cross-dressing matriarchal type character who goes by the name of Medea. 
as the years gone by, I can understand why she's one of the most beloved characters in the comedy film industry. But through many of the films following her, I can I I can bear I can see that her character is starting to lose some steam. And I found that here in A Medea Christmas. Not to say that Medea lacks in humor in this installment. Her wisecracks are what carry the film. Even from the beginning, you know, she uh, starts the opening scene doing menial jobs at an apartment store in Atlanta, whether it be wrapping wrapping packages or or greeting people at the department store, you know, floor manager stuff. You know, simple, easy, cushy jobs. But she just simply can't do it because she's got attitude. And she is extremely sassy. She is very highly opinionated. And she also just seems just so hard to work with. And it comes to a point where her daughter, Eileen Murphy, played by Anne Maria Horsford, she just couldn't take enough. She had no choice but to fire her because of her negative attitude and because she brings negative energy in everywhere she goes because she's sassy, she's erratic, she's erratic, she has a uh, very strong opinionated, she's easy she's so easily judgmental that she becomes at times quite unbearable to coexist. But there is one thing about Medea that actually makes her special is that she has heart. Hi mom. She has heart. And yes, when it comes to issues dealing with family and stuff like that, she will be on your side and she will pull through. She always seems to know the right words to say, even, and she also knows when to assume the truth, even if the truth hurts. It's always about sincerity and never about hypocrisy with her. She's always being sincere. Even if the thing she says that is sincere hurts. I mean, if she says to me that I got funny shaped eyebrows, at least she's being honest that I have funny shaped eyebrows. I mean, I'd particularly be happy with her saying that, but at least she's telling the truth. I mean, she'll probably have other high opinions about the way I look, but anyhow, that's, that's against me. And, and, you know, she definitely uses her humor and her sass to get by. I mean, from the early scene with her working at an apartment store in Atlanta, her observant, judgmental sense of humor is really, really priceless. And while the presence of a six-foot-five tall-inch man dressed in drag will surely put a smile to your face. Hey, why not? I watched the Irish comedy Mrs. Brown's Boys and... And there's a guy who dressed in drag, and he provides, and he, he's pretty funny, strongly opinionated, extremely judgmental, and also, and also doesn't care in the least what people think of him or his opinions, or her opinions, if you're looking to thinking that Mrs. Brown is a woman, even though it's actually just a man in drag. So in spite of the clever quips from Medea, it's a shame that Perry also has the task of narrating the scope of what the story is all about, and then the momentum plummets from there. Because let's face it, Tyler Perry practically carries the, carries the film. He has his hands print, prints all over it. He directs, he produces, he, run, he wrote the script, he stars in the script, he narrates, and he just carries the film. And everybody else is just secondary, or they're just bland stock background characters. All the rest of the supporting cast just can't hold it together. He's the only one. This is pretty much all Tyler Perry and really very little for nobody else. 
That's the feeling I get in this movie. And that's where its main weakness stands. So unable to accomplish the simplest tasks from loyal patrons, Medea gets released from her job in bad terms, and uh, she migrates to Alabama along with her equally overbearing niece, Eileen, played by Anna Maria Horsford. Now, um, her daughter, who goes by the name of Lacey Williams, played by Tika Sumter, she is living in Alabama, and she works as a school teacher in the small rural area. And um, uh, she's going through a little bit of some some problems, um, a couple of them. One of them is, of course, in their town where they live, they always have some big uh, budgeted Christmas Jubilee. It's been a tradition in that in that town for many, many, many years, centuries maybe. But unfortunately, due to financial situations, uh, they're going to do something that they've never done before. They're going to probably have to cancel the Christmas Jubilation because of some money problems, something that involves around a dam and stuff like that because a certain area was flooded and they need the money for that so the plans of the christmas jubilation is definitely in a bit of a narrow situation and it needs to be checked out before any plans for a jubilee is supposed to go into fruition um, without trying to find the money they're they're virtually stuck in a rut in that situation so then it's up to um, Lacey to call up her ex-boyfriend, who's this bigwig CEO businessman. And um, even though she is reluctant to be in contact with, with him, she's willing to sort of just temporarily put her differences aside between her and her ex-husband. I'm not her ex-husband, her ex-boyfriend. I think his name was Oliver, played by actor J.R. Lemon. She's willing to put her differences aside so that he can help her financially so that this Christmas Jubilee will get underway. And he agreed. But under one condition. And that one condition is that this jubilee should not bear any kind of religious significance in this jubilee, which means they have to stamp out all the biblical stuff in this jubilee. And I think that's kind of a little bit of an injustice. Now, listen, I'm not exactly a very holy guy. Not to say that I'm an atheist, not to say I'm an over-religious fan fanatic. I sort, of, I sort of rest in the balance of being agnostic. There you go, that's kind of like playing it in the middle. Which means that I'm not an atheist, I'm not overly religious, but at the same time, I don't debunk people who are religious as well as I don't debunk people who are atheists. I believe in the whole thing like, I'm not sure if there's a God, but if there's a God, I'll be more than happy to willing to meet him. I'll be fair. Like I said, I'm agnostic. But, uh, you know, I think in all due fairness, balancing pagan and religion in Christmas just fairs things out easily. I mean, when it comes to the, the religion part, you know, about Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, the three wise men, the animals, the long journey, the inn, the manger, you know. And of course, you got, of course, the pagan stuff with the Santa Claus 
and the red-nosed reindeers and the ho-ho-hos. And of course, the turkey dinners and the ice cream logs and the and all the other and all the other yummy goodies that come in between. That's all the pagan stuff. And it's always good to balance both of them. Just like, you know, and just like, you know, with Easter coming up, you know, it's always good to balance the pagan side to Easter, just like it's good to also include the religious significance of, of Easter, you know, like, like Jesus going on his long journey to sacrifice himself to the cross to prove that he is the, the legitimate son of God. And then you also have, of course, the pagan side of Easter with the bunnies and the chocolate eggs and the chicks. So it's always good to just try to combine both because it just works out splendidly. At least it gives more of a versatile kind of diverse structure into the two leading holidays in, on the calendar. But yes, that's that's one of her main, so that's one of Lacey's main uh, issues. The other issue is she is she is trying to secretly not tell her mother that she isn't in Oliver's life anymore. She dumped him. And she is engaged to another person. Uh, his name is Connor, played by Eric Lively. Now, Eileen thinks that Connor is just a helping hand, a farm hand, so to speak, for Lacey. That he's just a, a worker on her farming area. But it goes a little bit, but he's more than just a farmhand. So then she says, okay, well, I guess it's fine for you to make friends with him. But he's also more than just a friend. He's also more than just going steady. He's even more than just a boyfriend. They're about to get engaged. And this is not going to sit well for Eileen. Not because he's a bad person. And it's not because he's horrible. He isn't. He's actually a down-to-earth, nice guy, friendly. I hate to drop the race card, but the fact of the matter is Lacey is dating a white guy. I know, I know, I know. I hate usually trying to use color or race cards in this, but yes, she's dating a white guy, and obviously Eileen does not approve the fact that her African-American daughter is dating a Caucasian man. And, um, of course, she, of course, she's going to probably find ways to, to spin a web of lies as to why she doesn't approve of her daughter dating a white guy. But, of course, you know, you can't really spread a web of lies in front of Medea because Medea will be more than happy to spill the beans and to and to divulge into the honest, real facts because she's all about sincerity and not a single ounce of hypocrisy comes out of her mouth. So... Uh, Eileen go, try, goes over to Lacey's, um, Lacey's home in Alabama for the festive season to make it a surprise.
And obviously, you know, Eileen, she's not fond of Caucasians, but Eileen cannot neglect her daughter from the holidays. While well, Lacey never told her mother that she is engaged to her new white boyfriend, Connor, played by Eric Lively, who, who she believes is working as a mere farmhand. It gets more intriguing, you know, once his parents uh, pay him a visit. And his parents are, of course, played by everyone's favorite redneck. That's right, I'm talking about Larry the Cable Guy. And his wife, uh, played by Kathy Najimy. Uh, Kathy Najimy, who still seems to think she's Peggy Hill. I mean, she's still talking like Peggy Hill. Um, Miss Najimy, with all due respects. King of the Hill's been canceled for like seven, eight years. You can lose the accent. Unless they're doing a reboot of King of the Hill, which probably might be interesting if they ever did do a reboot of King of the Hill. But if they do a reboot of King of the Hill, I, I, I probably would like to know who would replace Brittany Murphy as the voice of Luann. That that would be kind of something I would I would probably be interested in. Who would replace Luann Platter if since you know Brittany Murphy voiced her over the many years on King of the Hill, but of course, you know, Brittany Murphy's not with us anymore. I wonder who would be her replacement. Who knows? But still, I still think that Kathy and Jimmy still thinks that her southern red or southern accent is still legit. I still just kind of think. I mean, she's she doesn't speak like that in real life, but um, she still thinks she's Peggy Hill. I mean, she even kind of has the same similar manners that Peggy Hill had in King of the Hill, overbearing and somewhat. And somewhat redneck type. Yeah, and it's, now their redneck humor is nicely added, considering that this film wants to go a bit all in for the poorly constructed seriousness. Yeah, and of course, you know, the stereotypes seem to come in there too. You know, with with the Southerners being all a bunch of simpleton hicks. You know, there, there is a lot of really badly done stereotypes. I mean, not all small town rednecks are all simple minded and deeply religious. And not all of them seem to act like, oh, hey, I'm going down to the well to fetch you some water, ma. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. No, they, they don't all act like that. But in this movie, this movie, which is, of course, fluctuated with a lot of stereotypes. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of that in this. Especially the way how they, especially how Alabamans really are, because they're not all like that. But then again, this is, this is the movies. This is how badly portrayed Alabamans are treated. The school where Lacey teaches seems to be in a financial bind, which may end up canceling the Christmas Jubilee. So Lacey reluctantly seeks um, her ex-lover, Oliver, to help provide the funding. Why no one ponders into where the direction of where this is all going is simply mind-boggling. Here, Perry ends up being the sponsor and also behind the construction of the dam and the Jubilee is on with the stipulation that no biblical references are permitted in the festivities. So once again, we also have Medea at the end saving the day with her pep talk, her persuasion, and her intimidating manipulative skills. And sooner or later, everything just all comes into place, all just due to the fact of some six foot, five inch tall cross dressing 
character. Everything comes into place. Yes, the Jubilee goes on. Religion is still added to 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 Christmas. And not that there's anything wrong, but the townspeople, please, it's just so in your face that even people who are for this will likely roll their eyes in disgust. This poor attempt of artistic value is very pedestrian, and the direction is poorly structured. It's a wonder this franchise was even given the green light. I mean, there's really no standout performances here. I mean, like I say, I think the only really come car actor who comes closest to showing a little bit of significance in humor is from Larry the Cable Guy. There was some funny scenes in him. There was a little bit of a cringeworthy scene where he, where he was accidentally put on a white sheet and people think that he's a member of the KKK. Oh, yes, I know. Typical Southerners who still think that that all people who are of the Caucasian persuasion are all KKK members, which is totally untrue. They only make up a small fraction. But, yeah, there was, there was that cringeworthy scene. It wasn't really, you know funny but uh i guess it it was more like a misfortunate sense of unintentional irony which i guess to some sense was funny but not laugh out loud funny because there's really nothing funny about things like that it was just the irony that kind of was awkward to say the least. A sigh of relief comes from Medea who succeeds in maintaining this film from being too overly sugary. Moments by rapping to the Christmas story to Lacey's classroom to her spots with Connor's father will likely provide a chuckle. But then she goes through tender moments, and the scenes just dry out. Uh, one of those tender moments was uh, one of Lacey's favorite students is a kid who could, who seems to come from a somewhat overbearing uh, family background. He um, seems to come from a rather controlling father. who's been going through some difficult times, so he's taking his hostilities out on his wife and his kid. Uh, I have to say that uh, this uh, this Noah Urea, he also seemed to be also pretty good as a standout. I wish I would have liked to have seen more scenes involving this boy. And uh, you know, he actually acted pretty good here, this Noah Urea kid. Uh, he's going to really go far, so I, I really guarantee it. He also has some great vocal pipes to boot, so that's also a, a nice added plus there. So he also kind of stood out too. But everybody else seemed to be either just rendered to just being stock background characters and basically straight straight guys. I mean, the only two funny guy, characters were, of course, Medea and the Larry the Cable Guy character. Those were like really the only two really funny performers here. I just never really quite dug the tender moments in this movie because it just it just got too saccharine. When Medea starts, you know, getting preachy with her morals, the fans just, you know, start to fade out on her. And even I was starting to sort of like count the hours like will this end i mean why do a lot of these christmas specials always have to have these moral preachiness 
And this is kind of like what runs amok in this movie. I guess it's kind of a bit cliche because this is a holiday themed movie. There's conflicts, there's struggles, and there's and there's of course, you know, these moral lessons that seem to come and take place here. This is not slapstick, but it's still, you know, I guess maybe effective in ways of delivering messages and powers of positivity so that there could be some positive outlight in the end. But I think it's just so ham-fisted and it's so shoved down our throats, it can be a bit unbearable. So, in the smoke of, so as the smoke clears, uh, would I recommend this movie? If you come in with low expectations, maybe you might find this movie special. But to me, it wasn't really that special because there wasn't very many people who carried the film. This is pretty much all Tyler Perry all the way. Uh, and it seems like he's only just playing his Medea character from the other um, Medea movies. He's playing other different alter egos as well. And um, here he's just Medea. And the scenes that don't have Medea in them tend to get a little dried out, boring, and cliched. There wasn't really very many people to carry the film except for Tyler Perry is Medea, Larry the Cable Guy, and um, this Noah Urea kid. He was also really, really good. But then again, after that, everybody else is just kind of forgettable. They were just at the moment. So when all said and done, if I was to give a scale out of 10, I would give a Medea Christmas a 6. And maybe that I'm being too generous. So I guess this ends my writer review. Thank you all for listening in. If you wish to subscribe to my channel, please feel free to do so. If you wish to leave a comment, go right ahead. But just remember the three secret, the three, the three simple rules. There's no secret to it. The three simple rules: be kind, be courteous, and don't be rude. And I'll be back again with another movie review. So until next time, this is Eric Redwriter saying, keep watching those movies, and I'll see you around. Goodbye.